Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Travis Snail, and welcome to, I guess, you know, a dynamic deal. We haven't done this in a while, I haven't done a solo cast in a bit. I was actually supposed to do a dynamic deal this week with Kyle and Liam, but then because the time difference, he lives in Australia, Kyle, so it's going to be his birthday at the time we want to record, and he's like, I can record, but I'll be like super hungover, so it could be a fun cast, but no, no, we both immediately went, no, no, no. Go, go enjoy your birthday, right? But today, so this is just a dynamic duo, as you can see, as always below, go down in the description, get the video and audio feeds there, wherever you want to listen to us, wherever you want to watch us. Uh, this is not a live one because I'm recording this at uh, 1 a.m. my time, so that's great. But in the future, we will be announcing when we do our Geek First uh, newscast or reviews, we'll be saying, hey, we're going to go live at this time. That's going to be on Twitch and YouTube for now. In the future, it might be one or the other. We're kind of testing them both out, but... As of right now, we'll say, hey, we're going live, and please join us, please. The biggest thing right now, too, is Twitch. Can you go over and follow us there? Because we need to grow that audience. That would help us with some, you know, we just went to phase three. Who knows what phase four could hold, you know? That's year or years away. But to build to that, we want us to, well, we, we want us to, we want us to do good. But we want to be able to grow as much as possible. And if we could keep growing on Twitch, that'd be great. So go over, hit us with a fall there. June 1st, my goodness, it's Less than a week away, our podcast network launches Geek Ultimate Alliance. You can go search it up right now. There's nothing on the feed there. There's just a little teaser. But then eventually, hopefully, we're going to be recording some this week. That's going to, you'll meet everybody. It'll be on this feed and the other feed. Of, you'll meet everybody. Get to hear about the shows exactly. The hosts. Get to meet them. Lots of great people. I'm one of the hosts. So if you like me, you can jump over there. Uh, I got a great host with Chris Balga over there. We do the Marvel Alliance. And if you go right now to wherever you want to go, whether it's our Patreon or Geek Ultimate Alliance, Geek Ultimate Alliance, it's a different feed. It's the same thing with Patreon. It's a different feed because different episodes and whatnot but it's five days a week six shows and uh yeah right now we already had people join our patreon which is crazy to think that we haven't even launched anything and people have joined so it doesn't matter how many people we really value that garrett being one of our biggest fans so garrett big shout out to you if you're listening to this you're just just a boss he mentioned mentioned me like oh geek of alliance you guys doing patreon blah, blah blah okay and then i got a notification and that guy has been supporting us for a while and yeah i couldn't thank him enough, and I can't thank anyone else enough, too, that they've jumped over, subscribed already. We're excited. Um, yeah, it's a few days away. I'm the first show with Chris. Uh, we kick off Marvel Alliance, and we've already announced that uh, our – what is our what is our storyline? Our topic is the MCU, the most – or sorry, the comic books that the MCU needs to adapt the storylines. We won't say how many we pick, but he picked some, I picked some, and we got in a really good discussion. Chris is a guy. Man, he knows his, he, his stuff, man. It is crazy, but – after that, so Marvel is kind of Marvel Mondays, Marvel Alliance, uh, DC Tuesdays, DC Alliance, uh, World's Finest True Believers, a great comic show with Chris, so check that out. Thursdays, bi-weekly, it switches off a slice of film with Katie, and Star Wars Alliance, and then Friday is Superhero Discussions, Travis Hines. Uh, I, I don't know if I can reveal who he's uh, reviewing it, but he's reviewing a classic animated series, so that that's launching. So please, if you like what we do, go over there and subscribe. We'll probably do some crossover stuff in the future for the first little like month or two. It's just going to be getting that network we're going like for us we as you see we do lots of casts but that is a that's going to be daily casts there you know there's a day <laughs> there's a cast every day and then some weeks there's going to be a cast not every day but every Monday to Friday and then some casts there's some weeks there's casts on Saturdays as well Sundays so in the future we'll probably do some crossover stuff at GV there'll be some exclusive Patreon episodes over there so it's going to be a good time and if you like what we do at Geek First, please, you can be like Garrett and be on both patrons because you'll get feeds and specialness over there, ad-free, early, exclusive episodes there, and you get the same thing over here. You can get right now our tiers. We're going to have new tiers dropping in June, but any tier from the dollar tier to the $50 tier, you join it. You get all the perks, but you can tell us what movie you want us to review. Like I said, we got some new perks going up there in June. We're excited about that. But go there and get the ad-free feed. You can get we can get you can get Howard the Duck early. That's not coming out until next February. You got Catwoman early, you got tons of stuff, you got exclusive, the Hobbit trilogy is exclusive to Patreon, the After Nines, the Nintendo NCU cast, we did an MCU Universe movie franchise with the uh, Nintendo franchise, man, I just saw pictures of Nintendo Land, oh boy, that is, that's looking good, that's, I, I want to go to Japan just for that, so, as always, head down the description below, and if you like what we do here, give us a review. So, as you've seen probably from the headline, 
all I'm talking about today is one topic. I got nothing else to talk about yet. There, there, it's news been slower. There's rumors the PS5 might get revealed next week. My God, I hope that happens. I think me and Dylan are both frothing at the mouth. There'll be a newscast for that. But then, in as long as it doesn't get delayed, but even then, we kind of have to start up in the next few weeks. We have some retros that are going out that the Patreons, a request that we just dropped. Um, what the heck did we just do? Which one did we release first? Color Out of Space is coming up next. So we, we dropped Swiss Army Man. So all the Patreon reviews that people put in said, hey, you know, they paid the dollar, paid the $5. Hey, you want us to review this? And we did. So we've had a fun time with some. We had a cringe time with others. We have a Batman Arkham Retro coming up soon. So we've got lots of good stuff. But um, in June, we're starting the Nolan Retro. So that's pretty much going to be the all-encompassing thing for June. We're going to have newscasts here and there, but only for the bigger stuff. And that's why today I did know when we'd be doing another newscast so that's why i wanted to jump on the horn here and do a little dynamic duo and when there's no liam when there's no kyle who's my damn dynamic duo it's you and me that we're we're the duo so that's always what i say that's why and plus it's just it's, it's the title of the podcast we really like the title and i don't want to think of anything else so there you go um so i'm only talking about one thing and one thing today I'm talking about Henry Cavill as Superman. Because like I said, I wasn't sure when we were going to be able to talk about this next and if it would be old news by then. And I just kind of have a lot of opinions of what's going on here. So it's, man, how the world can change in a week, just over a week, right? So when this is releasing, this is on a Thursday, but I'm recording this. Well, I guess it is Thursday. But still, to me, it's kind of Wednesday night. I just got off work. Um Last Wednesday is when we had the Man Still commentary track, and then we had the huge announcement of the Snyder Cut, right? And then since then, it's been a massive fallout. There have been so many podcasts, and thank you all of you who have been listening to it. We did a, a bunch of coverage last week, and it's doing really well numbers for us, so thank you very much. I know that's a lot of hype and a lot of opinions going on, so I'm sure that's why you want to tune in, but just thank you as general, as all of you. <laughs> as usual, as general, as obvious, no, as usual for tuning in for these bigger episodes, so... Snyder Cut, a.k.a. Zack Snyder's Justice League, coming 2021 to HBO Max. HBO Max is now launched. Lots of controversy with not being on Amazon. Uh, what is it? Fire Stick or the Roku? I don't have... We I live in Canada. We don't have HBO Max, so I don't really got to worry about it. We have like an equivalent called Crave. It's it's definitely not the same, but it's it's fine. Uh, and then, uh, what was the other thing? It's on 4K, so having a little like rougher launch, but still. So this came out today. And then Zack Snyder's Just League came out sometime in 2021, right? So today it was a weird trickle of news because people were throwing out exclusives, but I had seen this news at many other places. So I don't know who had the exclusives because I was at work. I just have – I have three phones. I, I have my personal phone. I have a kind of podcast S just for gear phone when we used to use that as a camera. And it's just kind of like a, maybe a music and podcast phone now to like, oh, I store a bunch of stuff on there. And then I have my podcast like – notifications phone and that gives me all the like oh boom 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 and yeah i i got three phones it's a it's a problem uh so i've seen this go about and i and this is where you know i many times said snyder cut would not happen warner brothers wouldn't fund that i never said it wasn't real as far as it existing i just said that i don't think it's a completed version the effects and that's kind of what it was right but many times i said they're not going to do this i was wrong there so I'll take uh, <clears throat> I'll try and get some pride back as far as on the Snyder cut reveal. I said Henry Cavill's back as Superman. There's no doubt about it. Just because, just to reiterate, I had said in the past he had not been very vocal about it. People had asked him about the Snyder cut, and he was always talking about he was more excited about going in the future. Never undercutting the Snyder cut, pun. But just kind of, oh, yeah, th th that's great. People are doing that. But I, what's what's next? You know, and then when they did that two year anniversary, Gal Gadot tweeted, uh, obviously, a lot of people like Momoa and Ray Fisher, but they had mentioned stuff before. Right. But Gal Gadot was a big one. And then Ben Affleck was an even bigger one. So, oh, <clears throat> excuse me. So the fact that these guys and gals have been tweeting, but no, Henry was a little suspicious, but he was on this live stream to announce to fully announce the snare cut, which he really had not much to say on it in the past, right? And I just thought from the whole layout, everything that was said, everything that was kind of put forward, he was going to be back. And I've said this many times that I feel like it makes sense. He is a, his star is only growing. He was a, he's part of Mission Impossible. He's the gift of the year. And Witcher is a massive popular show, which I think he's great in. So I just think that if they would have let him go, some other franchise would have scooped him up, whether that be Bond, whether that be Feige and Marvel, 
he's a hot commodity. So rumors come around from all over. Like I, said, I can't tell you who had the actual exclusive at the time of this recording, but I saw it from like the rap and then Deadline and then Variety that we there's a lot to break down here, but more or less, he's back. And that's a good thing because last week there were some reports of definitely C, as I do my tier charts, definitely like C minus, C, C plus tier websites of reporting this. And that's the problem after the Snyder Cut that there's websites that report the Snyder Cut was real. One, it never was. We had that confirmed multiple times. Zack Snyder said it wasn't. We're making it. We had the, uh, I think it's like the head, the, the chief of operations of Warner Brothers. He's the head of HBO Max. He literally said... The Snyder Cut does not exist. A finished movie does not exist. Zach is building it. It didn't exist. And that's why I never feel like I, like, because uh, Dylan and Taylor tried to give me a little shit in the group chat. Like, you said it would never. I said it would, like, in this form, it would never come out. And, like, the way it was, it was never just done. You could let it go. Much like a lot of other people thought. I was not alone in that, but I just subscribed to that theory. So, <clears throat> this is all going on, right? And the guy from HBO Max doesn't exist. And the other thing before we go on the Snyder Cut or before we go on Superman, with all this, right? Because all these sites, they can report anything. There was websites, what I was saying is there's websites that knew nothing about this at all. They're just taking a stab in the dark, like, we got this covered. And, the, you know, you, you say, oh, well, anything's possible now, right? Because if they at any point said the Snyder Cut was real and got confirmed, they said, see, I'm a big time scooper. I know my stuff. I got, I got sources. Yeah, all right. So we had some reports last week, even though I just believe them, but I, will, I wanted to wait till something more substantial, like a, a variety, a deadline, rap, th- those type of places, right? So all over we're getting reports. Now here's the funny thing. Baseline, he's back. Henry Cavill, the plan is at least it's in talks, or some, which in talks always means they're talking probably money, right, and specifics. And they're very close. We've seen things fall apart when things are in talks. Look at Alec Baldwin. He's supposed to be in Joker, right? So things are in talks for him to come back. So one, that's just great that he's back overall. I'm a big fan of Henry Cavill, as I just mentioned. I like him in the Superman role. I don't always think the writing has been great for him. I'm somebody that notoriously has not liked Man of Steel. And I like BVS, but I don't think it's a good movie. Um, this is a can of worms for another day. I actually watched Man of Steel last night because of all this hype, and I just want to get in. And it's actually the most I had ever liked it. I I needed to kind of have a different view on it. I kind of did watch it as like an Elseworld sort of tale, but there were more things that I caught on that I thought, you know, what? this is hitting me a little different this time. Maybe it was that case. There's still stupid shit in that movie. There's still a guy who, a dad who you know, gives his life up to, for his son's secret. But then earlier, like later on in his life, his son fucks up this like asshole's driver's truck because he like pushed him around a bar. So it's like your dad killed himself to keep a secret, but you almost risked everything by just messing up this guy's truck. Like anybody could hear that. Anybody could turn the corner and say, like, look at this guy. He's flying. He's throwing big logs. Like for that, like your dad died for you to be a little like pain in the air. Like, oh, honestly a little bitch and i would find that precedent wasn't there and that's the editing of that movie they make it seem like it's not there because they put it forward but really if you think about chronologically you go uh his dad you know said oh don't do anything be a secret you should let those kids drown and then what does he do he's fucks up some guy's truck there's so many things i hate the transient there's so many things man still that still bug me but i did like it the most i ever have but one thing i've always said is i like henry cavill i just wish he had better writing now this is the difficult part. So as of right now, there's multiple reports going on and they're all different. They're all saying different things. They're saying he's back. And the other common thing they're saying is he is not getting Man of Steel 2 or a sequel to Man of Steel is not in the works. It is him being back in the universe and appearing in films. What seems to be the headbutting going on specifically specifically between deadline variety they don't know the kind of size of that role and they don't know where that role is going to go and they're very different because deadline is reporting he's going to be in multiple films as i said they both report and they kind of i think both of them maybe use this if not I'm sorry, I'm mistaken then, but kind of compare it to the Hulk in the MCU, where the Hulk doesn't have his own MCU film, but he's around a lot, right? And that's where it's conflicting because Variety, I'll start with Variety, they said it was it's going to be a cameo, and then Justin Kroll came down and doubled down and said it's just a cameo. 
He's going to be in some film, just a cameo. He will have the cape back again. And then he listed certain movies that he would be in. And he had listed, uh, let me take a look here. And Justin Kroll, if you don't know, he's the guy that originally broke Brat- Pattinson as Batman and stuff like that. He has a long, He's probably one of the best scoopers in the game as far as consistency and being right. So he said, and he was from Variety, but I wanted to mention this because he says, Cavill's return only in a cameo and would likely have him appearing in a film where he has previous ties to a title character, Aquaman Shazam. Sources say not for Black Adam or Wonder Woman. New Man still film is way off with no certainty certainty that Henry would return to star. Now, <clears throat> before I get into the where and when and the size, all these people so far have said there's no sequel plan. That's not that's not in the cards right now. That's I would say the the phrase to remember is right now. Because the Snyder Cut a few months ago, and I know they say, oh, uh, we talked to them last November and we have planned this the whole time. Maybe, but also in that Hollywood Reporter article, it came out and said, oh, the budget's going to be 20 to 30, 20 to 40 million, right? And then the head of HBO Max interview said, I wish it was that much. So clearly, that's the thing that's very strange with the D- this DC thing, because there's many people like a few weeks before the Snyder commentary track that were saying, no, it's dead. That's not happening at all. And then there's some people, if you want to believe it or not, said that within the past few weeks, and especially because of COVID, Warner Brothers, at t kind of changed their mind, either fast-tracked it or said, let's do this. So there's been lots of camps putting out different information. Even look at this Variety vs. Deadline. Variety and Deadline, two of the most reputable places, putting out different reports. It's not like before when Kroll put out, oh, Pattison is playing Batman. And then I think Deadline fold up said, oh, Pattison is not cast yet because it's down to him and Nicholas Holt. Kroll stand by and said, it's Pattison. He didn't change. He didn't add Holt to the story. He just said, it's Pattison. So that's where it's like, okay, it's the same, but there's a little different. That's the same in this situation, but this is a completely different as far as the size of the role. Because I think as far as certainty in another movie, this is, to me, people getting back together in a relationship. Okay? You <laughs> you know I love my analogies, right? If you're a longtime fan. So I think most of us all have probably been there, right? Where you break up with somebody, you get back together, and there's always this little awkwardness, right? And I'm not going to get too radar or whatnot, but there's always this awkwardness of being together for the first time, sleeping over maybe again for the first time, seeing that person's friends for the first time, even like like I said, I'm a little graphic, but even having sex for the first time, again, if there's been a breakup, doesn't even matter how long, but especially if it's been longer, it's just, it's... It's old, but it's new again. There's been changes, but it's not. And you want to, you've had past problems, so you want to forgive that and you want to move forward, but they're still kind of lingering, but you're still easing in things. You can't just, for the most part, just get back to the way things were when you're happiest, right? You're going to have to build up because there was some sort of breakup or break, whatever it may be. So I'm not surprised. I'm disappointed I'm not hearing the he's going to be a Hulk S character leading to Superman 2 or Man of Steel 2. Hulk, we can't do that right now because Marvel doesn't have the rights. So it makes sense, oh, he's going to be in all these films and be a side character. Okay, makes sense. Superman, which there were some reports a while back ago that they were planning, like this was even longer, that they were doing a Supergirl movie, but then maybe AT&T or one of those took a look at that and went, ah, maybe we're not done with Superman, and Henry might return. So the past few months, there's been all these kind of inklings of, oh, they might be going a different direction, there's, you know a chance for Henry, and then when that happened on the stream, I went, okay, he's in. So I am disappointed I'm not hearing these reports that there's a plan for a sequel, but I don't think that's the... I don't think that's the final word. I think, just like the Snyder Cut, just like Ben Affleck directing the Batman, starting the Batman, anything can change, right? And I think whether it is Henry and Warner Brothers or Henry and the audience, they want to ease you back in. They don't want to be like, boom, Man is Still 2, or boom, Superman with Henry Cavill. They want you to see Henry Cavill and go, you know what, I really like, I did like Henry Cavill. For the, I, I think for the most part. I think I think many people do, but I mean like even the general audience, because I don't care what people say. You look at Man is Still, you look at BBS, very divisive movies, reviewed, not the greatest. And I, I know lots of people go, oh, critics. I, For me, every time I talk about those movies with people it is very 50 50 it's like you really enjoyed it or loved it or you hate them i know tons of people that that turn them off of dc and they are now back because they kind of like what they're doing with birds of prey and aquaman and wonder woman so he does have i talked about this a while back ago with chris who i'm hosting more reliance on uh civil servants podcast check them out every friday they're going to be part of the network as well we kind of talk about henry cavill being a scapegoat because 
if the portion that does not like Man of Steel or Zack Snyder's Vision of DC, you associate that with Henry Cavill, not Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder is a big director, but he's not big enough that my parents know who he is personally. They know who Christopher Nolan is. They know who, obviously, Steven Spielberg is and whatnot, but Scorsese. But Snyder, you go, oh, he directed this, this. Oh, okay, but they couldn't pick him out of a lineup. Maybe they couldn't do that with Nolan. I think my my dad could. But even then, you say Christopher Nolan. Oh, right, they did. he did that Inception movie, right? And he did those Batman movies. Yeah, I really like those. So Zack Snyder doesn't have that name. So the brunt falls on Henry Cavill. So when you bring him in, you're going to get that section of fans I would say at some at one point, including myself, at one point I think I was a lot more down on Henry Cavill. I always liked him, but now I, I love him and I think he is great in that role. And I think there is a great Superman with Henry Cavill waiting. I think, you know, I like Man of Steel a bit more. BVS I like, but I don't think it's a good movie. I think there is a top, there is a Wonder Woman-esque level Superman film with Henry Cavill. But when you bring him back... You're going to get that little tick of people that didn't enjoy those movies and ah, like he's back. Like that kind of represents everything I didn't like. I, I don't want to see him again because if they're doing something new and fresh and they're changing it up, but they still want to use some of the old guard. If people see Henry, they might go, oh, no, I I don't want that. That that that's old and that's not what I liked. So I think they want to ease him in where it's like you see him here. Oh, why is he in this? But then it's like, oh, you know what? I did really like him. And I think they want to get the narrative of people like myself or anybody of, hey, maybe I didn't in, I didn't love those movies, but I loved that guy as that character. I would be down to see another movie of him. And then you put him in another movie and then he does cameo here or he has like a supportive role like a Hulk and Thor Ragnarok. You start building up to till there's a fever pitch to go, I really want to see Henry Cavill will be Superman again. <clears throat> so I think that's still on the table. I think it's just they're easing him back in. They're getting you used to the idea of Henry Cavill in this new DCU, whatever it could be. So as far as the sequel, I think that's possible. <coughs> oh, sorry. I got a... Uh, I'm going to take this drink of water. I got a frog the size of Alabama in my throat, apparently. <clears throat> so that's great. Um... So sequel, I think, is on the tail despite these reports. Now, the actual reports of... For, so Variety is weird because they have two things. They had one other Hollywood guy. I can't remember his name. Like maybe, I think just like a reporter or a writer. He said that quoted it and said, oh, well, Variety reports that... Um, what was the potential sequels? It was Aquaman, like where he would cameo. I'll, I'll get the deadline in a second if I can get up to my thing here. Here we go. It's pretty funny because I shared this in the Geek Ultimate Alliance chat and it was a screenshot of it. It was the article and then it was a picture of the a phone case, just like an ad. And Chris was like, oh, nice, nice case. And then he's like, oh, the the Batman stuff. That makes sense. So <laughs> um, it's not loading right now. It's probably because I'm recording. Oh, here we go. So uh, in variety, this, the, it's weird because Kroll comes out and says, because sometimes people do this where they're part of an uh, organization, but they still get other news. The cameo is in one of DC's upcoming movies, The Suicide Squad, Aquaman 2, or The Batman. So, for me, the two natural places where he would fit, and I guess what I will say as far as Variety and Deadline, because we'll just talk about this on net, Variety was saying, kind of saying it's a cameo or just a cameo. Kroll came out, came out and said it's just a cameo, but Variety kind of made it sound like smaller roles cameo, but in one of these movies. Deadline said multiple films, Hulk like they for sure said that so they to me if you're talking about Hulk like that's not a cameo that's an actual role so you have two different places reporting different movies he'd be in and different type of sizes so for the movie he would appear in and I'm going to go down these DC movies I would have thought Black Adam or The Flash and it's funny that both of these ones have said no and even Umberto Gonzalez who is at the rap said nah it's not going to be Black Adam and most people are saying it's not going to be Wonder Woman because like, when would you film that? It'd be very tough, right? It's having enough trouble getting out already. I would think Shazam or The Flash. Black Adam, I, that was my third one, just because Henry Cavill has the same agent as The Rock. And many times The Rock has talked about Henry Cavill. Again, with these rumors, even last week, when we talked about this with the whole GV crew, that there was rumors that The Rock was pulling for Cavill to get back in there. And there's, po- you know, they always do cryptic posts of them drinking together, like, oh, big plan. So it's like the Black Adam movie is getting stacked. But there's a few people, again, you can say, you can completely throw this at the wall because sometimes these reports, like I said, you have someone like Umberto who many times said 
the Snyder Cut would never happen, never come out, came out. And he was one of the first ones to say, hey, you're going to get an announcement soon. And again, that THR article where it said, oh, 20 to 30 to 40 million. And the HBO head goes, I wish it was that cheap. So again, you always got to take everything with grain of salt, right? Even with this, the A tier, you never quite know if it's real. So they have different reports, but he's come back. I would have thought, so we take Black Adam in the equation. Shazam or The Flash. Shazam, I thought, because obviously you had that cameo at the end with the no Henry Cavill body. But I thought, one, that's a fun place to put him in there. It would work, kind of the vibe going on. I'd like to see Henry Cavill in a comedic role like that as far as... I don't need him to be always comedic. I, I like some of the things they did with Man of Steel with him. But you, I would like to see him in that setting or react to that setting. And I also just think that Shazam was a hit. It was profitable. It was not a bomb or anything like that. But it was not a massive hit. I think adding Superman to that would help. And The Flash is just because... Yeah, the Flash has been weird, right? Because it's gone back and forth, back and forth. Remember a long time ago on the Comic-Con stage, they announced Flashpoint. The Flash was going to be the Flashpoint movie, change a bunch of stuff, do a bunch of things, and then it kind of went away from that. And now it seemed like from some rumors going around that's going back to that. And that's where we'll bring up the Batman here in a second. But if they're doing Flashpoint, they clearly want to rejigger some things and move some things around. So Henry Cavill could easily be a supporting character in that, but also just a sign of, oh, he is this way. or Which even then, in the end of Justice League, who knows Zack Snyder's Justice League, but he's kind of acting a bit more that classic good old boy Superman, right? So he could be in there to me in just some sort of role. I don't think you really need to change him, but it could also set up some things down the line. But... To me, that those two make the most sense. Shazam, the vibe, and they introduced some Flash because, okay, him and Flash had that race, so there's some connection there, but also just it's a grand scope movie. I could see him being there, and he would mesh well as well with the Flash. Aquaman, no. Other than if these are literally just cameos like Iron Man 3 where Iron Man is telling his whole story to a therapist and then he wakes up at the end credit scene and it's Mark Ruffalo and he's like, I'm not that type of doctor, Tony. If it's a fun end credit scene like that, I could see him being in any of these movies. Fine. But if I'm trying to think how you're going to use Henry Cavill, it has to be something, not world ending, but something important, right? I just don't want him to be the Shazam cameo already cashed in on the we're using superman for kind of a joke and you missed the opportunity because you didn't get cavill so i don't want to see that again even though you have them so to me if i'm just so let's just take out the it's a fun cameo fun time cameo what does it do for the story i don't see it doing anything for the Aquaman story i really i really don't he's gonna be dealing with black mana orm is gonna be in prison probably helping him. i i just don't see it suicide squad again i don't see a big story reason i think that's a weird thing to throw on James Gunn, but some people have brought up if it's a fun time cameo of maybe the Suicide Squad is escaping and they want to get out of there and Superman just comes in, ra- like, rings them all up and puts them back into prison. Or maybe that's the beginning of the movie, right? All these people were out and he, he got them all and put them back. Maybe. That could be fun. Again, the fun time thing. But if I'm thinking a story, I don't see anything for Suicide Squad. I feel like they are lower tier characters and not even popularity because Harley Quinn is very popular. But even though Birds of Prey didn't do great, but even just immense of lower tier as far as the stakes, you know, I, I don't think he's worried about these people. I think that's Batman jobs. I think that's the Birds of Prey job. I don't think he needs to worry about what's Harley Quinn up to. And then we got some other ones, like I said, Black Adam, that's kind of been shot down, even though there's some hinting. So, again, I wouldn't, you know, fully believe anything. Take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, Joker 2, if that's happening, you're not going to see him in there. Uh, Wonder Woman, I agree with everybody else. The cameo. That doesn't make sense because when we do film that. So that's why it is. That's why I do think it might end up being a fun time. Oh, look, Superman's here cameo. But if not, and this is the last option, and it's the title of, or one of the titles of this. So them saying, because then, like I said, you have Kroll saying the exact opposite, right? Of like, it's going to be somebody he knows previously. But then you have other people saying, like, well, this variety article points to it could be the Batman. That is a strain. That is not what I would have picked. And I got to give credit to Travis Hines, who's going to be on the network, network hosting uh, superhero discussions and DC Alliance now. Um, he said that he believes anything after that CW Flash crossover scene, right? When you had Ezra Miller and Grant Gustin, he kind of had has the impression of anything's possible. So when he said that, I went, you know what? You're completely right. Anything is possible, so I can't, even the scenario could happen, I can't really say this, no, this is not going to happen. If I have a gun to my head, if I give you a percentage, I don't think this is going to happen. But if they, there's some people talking about, right? 
And him being in that causes a l- tons of problems. Tons of tons of <laughs> just a can of worms. Because you have Robert Pattinson's Batman, who as of right now seems like he's taking place in present day, but he's going to be in year two. That doesn't make sense. So you can't do the, again, unless you really want to do the whole X-Men. You, they could. Maybe that's what they want to do. If they want to do the whole X-Men, we have a messy universe, we're just making movies, we hope they're good, then fine, do that. I'm not a fan of that. I like when there is some consistency. I don't think you need to be the MCU. I love the MCU. I love the DC. EU was like that, where it's connected. We got our big end game stuff like that. Obviously, some problems, so they kind of shift away from that. I would love to be connected, but I don't need to be as connected as the MCU or has in depth. Just want some connection. But if you do that, so if you do that in that context, you can't do the whole Rhodey Hulk thing where, oh, they just, Batman is Robert Pattinson now. No, he's younger. He's in his second year and it's in present day. So that doesn't work. And it wouldn't work for Superman being there if it was a prequel because like he doesn't know about Bruce yet or Batman. So then the thing is, do they do the whole we're just going to ignore it and have some fun? They could. Again, I don't want them to go that route. Or does this tie into Flashpoint? And I know I was talking about this also with Travis, uh, Travis Earth 1 or 2. Who knows what we're going to call him now when we're both on the same network. But he kind of brought this point of, well, you couldn't have Superman cameo in there of Flashpoint because the Flashpoint time thing has to happen and then he has to go back. So we shouldn't see that first, right? For me, my thing is maybe he ends up there and he's asking for help and it's that cliffhanger of if it's an end credit scene, it's that cliffhanger of how Superman here and why is he talking to another Batman? And then when you go into Flashpoint, you know, okay, at some point Superman is going to get brought on this or we're going to meet it with Superman and he's going to go on this adventure. I thought it would be a nice play to, for mainstream people to set up as far as, oh, why is he with Robert Pattinson's Batman? And him to be like, something happened and now I'm on your universe and people go, oh my god like he you know like and that's the thing that's a good thing you know talking about the competition with there being parallel universes MCU and especially in their biggest film Endgame I think there's a lot more people like my mom or mainstream people that could be with that idea of like oh this is in the same reality but it's a different place you know which is I know people would know what a parallel universe is but seeing it in a concept of a comic book movie there are other movies that do it but it this was a grand scope right of different like carbon copies of each other, different events going on. So I think there is a version where you end it in an end credit scene and then it is Superman saying, hi, I need your help or hey, everything's gone to shit, everything's going wrong. And then it ends. It's the same way as um, the Wolverine. It ended with Xavier rolling up, being like, hey, I need your help, blah, blah, blah. Sentinels are coming. How's he back? What's going on? Where are we going? None of that's really answered. Of course, we get to answer where they're going because they're being hunted, but we never, in film form, get answered how Xavier is really back, right? They kind of talk about this whole, like, oh, he went into this guy's body. <laughs> he went into this guy's body at the end of X3, so he's taking over his consciousness, but it creates all these problems, like, why is he in the wheelchair? Because in this continuity, he made it that he got shot. Um, why does he look the exact same? So, but they just ignore it, right? So maybe that's the way they go. They just ignore it. But I think you could have that route of it's setting up something. We don't know exactly what, where are we going? And I, I just don't believe it, especially that one. I just don't see uh, the only purpose you would have him in there to me is to set up something like a flashpoint or some big event that's going to change the continuity. So those two Batman, that Batman, that Superman can interact. I just don't think that's case for the many reasons because one, I don't, and I guess this ties into two. This is going to be a very different Batman film. Now, I'm somebody, I wrote an article a long time ago, our first year of BBF was how, why Christopher Nolan's Batman should have crossed over with Man of Steel's Superman. And I think at the end of the day, to go the route they went was better because you're dealing with the fantastical element. Christian Bale's Batman was dealing with criminals. But at the end of the day, in comic books, Batman was just dealing with criminals till he had to deal with a human crocodile, till he had to deal with Clayface. If you go back, like, there are worse supervillains, but at some point he had to just be fighting crime, right? And then it escalated. So you have that, for at least for Nolan's one, but it sounds like they're going to do this again where it is to me, a bit more grounded. It's rumored that it is a kind of murder mystery. People are comparing a lot to Sherlock, apparently people that have like seen stuff or maybe seen a script, but like a Sherlock Holmes. To me, that doesn't sound like the movie where Superman lands at the end of it and goes, hey, the world is in peril, the time. Oh, man. What, what the, the speed force is taking over stuff. We really need you, Bruce Wayne. This Bruce Wayne helps out. 
I don't think the movie's going to be on that type of scale, just judging from these plot synopsis and what people are saying about being a Sherlock Holmes kind of Riddler as his Moriarty. And two, I just... I don't think that's what Pattinson wants to do. I think Ben Affleck wanted to do it because he had seen the MCU. His kids had talked about it. Zach probably or also gave him a pitch he really agreed with. And I think he also just didn't want to pass up the chance of being Batman because he played Daredevil. If you look into why he did that, he did that because after Batman Robin, he goes, oh, they're never going to make another. They're never going to make another Batman because they killed the franchise. But this is like equivalent what Marvel has going on. So. He does the role, but right away they set up that he's in a fantastical universe. Pattinson, I feel like he's taking this on him, whatever you think, and whatever you want to think about the working out issue, if it's true, if he was trolling, whatever it may be, I feel like he chose Batman not to do the MCU thing, not to go fight Superman, not to create this big universe, because he saw this great script that Matt Reeves and his team put together, and he saw the character of Batman going, I want to play him. Especially if this is a full-on, I disagree. Sometimes people say, we've never seen the Detective Batman. We've never seen it be the most highlighted thing. We've definitely seen it before in many films, but it's never been the key thing. But if it's the key thing, I just don't think if it is a Sherlock Holmes-esque movie, I don't think it fits that vibe, and I don't think... Passons Batman is going to fit that. That's the same way I can even admit that. I think there's a way you could have made it work of Nolan's Batman in there. But at the end of the day, it would have been a big stretch because he was so reality-based, right? So I think Passons is going to be the same. I think it's going to be that. And two, I just don't see him doing it. I see a Ben Affleck returning or a recast of Ben Affleck's version of Batman before Pass and signs on to do, you know, a bunch of flashpoints or whatnot. I just, I don't think so. I think he's here to say what he wants about the character. It's one movie, rumored to be a trilogy. I think they'll get in, do that trilogy, get out, and he's put a stamp on Batman and go, that's my role. So, the thing is, it's going to be one of these movies. And that's why I do subscribe to it is the yay fun route whether it is a shazam or it is a suicide squad you know even with aquaman you can make some sort of funny segment or something so i think that's the route they will go as far as him being in the batman officially i don't think so i i wouldn't i will be willing to like put five to ten bucks on it a percentage i'm probably like a 70 75 i don't think he's going to be in the batman if it's been Affleck's batman sure that's different but the batman a Technically a reboot, kind of an origin story almost, new actor, new director. I just don't see it. I think they should go the Joker route and have Batman be the the Batman be the standalone Joker wise, and then you can cash in with your other big DC properties over here. So yeah, it's interesting stuff. I'm just happy he's back. If I didn't stress that enough, I'm happy he's back and gonna get another opportunity at playing this role. Um and I hope that just means that when he does it, people get excited. And like I said earlier, they go, I want to see more Henry Cavill as Superman. Because I think there's lots of potential there. I think he's great for the role. And yeah, if, again, like my last point, if it is a fun cameo, it could be in any of these. There, that That's why I don't want to be a fun cameo. And I don't think, especially because there's rumors that he turned down the Shazam cameo because they didn't have plans for him after that, right? So if he's just coming to do a cameo, If you follow history, that would mean he's doing a cameo to play ball so they have something for him, whether it be a crossover film or his own film. So, I don't know. Something to think about. Uh, Anyways, thank you very much for joining me. It's just like special impromptu cast. I'm very excited to see what happens the next few. It's been crazy. The Snyder Cut, HBO Max, it's changed everything. It's changed. It's going to change media. The way they're spending on this, it's crazy. So, as always, thank you very much. All the description or everything you need to know is in the description down below. Our social media feeds, our podcast, video, audio, Twitch. Please go subscribe there. We would fall or we would very much like it if you gave us a fall. So thank you very much for tuning this episode. And until next time, it'll not be boring.